being in the GSA, it really lends itself to making friendships because it's like you're meeting kids who maybe you have something in common, even if you don't know it or you haven't met them yet. So what we really want to do is like to make friends, you know, in the simplest way possible, you know, just join a club and you can meet other people like you. And then we would use weekly Zoom meetings. We would play games together so we can kind of like have a bond like beyond just being in a club together. And so it was really nice to kind of like have an extra bond like beyond just the club. So that really lended itself to kind of motivating everyone to show up, I think. I'm Sherry Vandenacker and welcome to Community Connections, sponsored by the Reading Coalition for Prevention and Support. Today, we're going to be talking with the Gay Straight Alliance at Reading Memorial High School. And we have with us Ellen Richards, who's president of the Gay Straight Alliance, and also Ms. Sharon Burke, the club's advisor. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, my pleasure. I think the research tells us that our LBGTQ plus community often experiences isolation and lack of support. And I imagine that during the pandemic, uh, isolation and lack of support has been exacerbated. It's been more difficult to figure out how to provide connections and resources to our LBGTQ plus students. So how has the Gay Straight Alliance been helping students through this time? Well, we've been very fortunate this year. Um, we have extremely strong leadership in um, uh, both Ellen Richards and Bryn Connolly, who is um, co-president. Um, they've managed actually to grow our group over the pandemic. So we're actually stronger and have more numbers than we did last fall. I was just looking through my camera roll and um, I noticed you know, the stark differences. Um, so, um, and certainly our um, kids have been very, very well trained um, by the um, safe schools, the Massachusetts safe schools. Um, um, both of them have been pretty active, um, especially Bryn Connolly. She's been attending monthly meetings of GSA leaders, leaders acro across the state. And, um, and, um, other GSA leaders and advisors, such as myself, the adults, um, were meeting virtually um, most of the pandemic. We, you know, one of the first things we said was like, you know, um, how are we going to stay connected? In fact, the first day of the pandemic, Ellen, I'm not sure if you remember this, but um, the day that we were dismissed from school was actually supposed to be um, the GSA prom that night. Um, and I think it was at Woburn High School was supposed to host it. So that was like one of the first events to be canceled. And we were really um, disappointed because that was the first year Reading had attended, um, you know, a, a GSA prom. But um, let me turn it over to Ellen um, to say more. Oh, yeah. I think like it really being in the GSA, it really lends itself to making friendships because it's like, you're meeting kids who maybe you have something in common, even if you don't know it or you haven't met them yet. So what we really want to do is like to make friends, you know, in the simplest way possible, you know, just join a club and you can meet other people like you. And then we would use weekly Zoom meetings. We would play games together so we can kind of like have a bond like beyond just being in a club together. And so it was really nice to kind of like have an extra bond like beyond just the club. So that really lended itself to kind of motivating everyone to show up, I think. How much did you grow? We grew, so last year we had roughly seven members at our largest and now we have about 20, so yeah. Oh, you tripled the growth. I can see why Ms. Burke is so impressed and excited to hear that. That's 
incredibly impressive to me to see that kind of growth under any circumstances, but certainly now. Do you feel that in some ways it's been easier to connect because of Zoom than when you needed to all be in the same place at the same time, given the complexity of high school students' schedules? Yeah, I think that especially our freshman class, they've been very like enthusiastic about coming. So I think a lot of the credit goes to them for showing up. But I think that last year we were all really busy because I think everything slowed down during the pandemic. So we were all able to communicate over like Google Classroom. We had a Google Classroom and then through Remind, just social media, it was easier to reach kids where they're at than to put up flyers. But yeah, we can do both now. So that's good. Technology can be a benefit, uh, especially for your generation, I think, who's so adept at using it. So have you learned anything from the pandemic or started anything during the pandemic that you expect to continue doing once we can all go back to school in more conventional ways? Yeah, I think so. During our like Zoom meetings that we would have, we would have somebody teach a topic that related to being LGBTQ and we would have like slideshows or maybe games or like an activity to do. And I think we'll continue that. I think we'll kind of merge like technology with also being face to face. I think that'll like enhance the club experience. I think that'll be good. Have you been able to make more connections with other clubs, like in other schools? Yeah, we've been able, especially through social media, we've been able to contact other GSAs and see what projects they're working on and then kind of have that like bridge the divide between schools. So that's nice too, yeah. Great. Um, this is a gay straight alliance. Do you wanna talk some about who you encourage to join the club? Yeah, so we're especially centered on like anyone who is on the like queer spectrum, like of who you're attracted to. And then also if you're like gender non-conforming or like you just don't identify as like you, the gender you're assigned at birth, that's what being trans is. And then non-binary and then anyone queer. And then we also love having allies too. Yeah, anyone who wants to come and support us, yeah. I'm sure we all love somebody who doesn't identify in the in traditional binary ways. And so I love that the Alliance really does welcome all people who recognize and celebrate uh, many forms of gender expression. I think that's so important. And for people to know if they want to support someone in their life uh, who doesn't identify in a straight binary way that this organization exists at the high school and that they can go and be an ally to the community. I think that's so important. So Ms. Burke. Um, yeah, I wanted to say that, um, uh, go back to what Ellen was talking about. Um, they do a lot of education in these meetings. Um, some of the slideshows, I mean, they, they call them slideshows, but really they, um, they delve in pretty deeply um, to some very complicated um, issues about identity and sexuality. And um, for example, these kids have helped us um, rethink our curriculum, what we teach, how um, we have um, how LGBTQ writers, historians, scientists have been marginalized, almost erased out of the curriculum. Um, and so, um, and um, how to bring them back into the curriculum, um, or at least recognize the fact that they have an LGBTQ association, regardless of whether that, you know, their sexuality or gender expression has anything to do with their, their field. Um, often we learn about um, events or inventions, but not the people associated with them. And um, as if, you know, the silence is, is you know, um, indicates something to be ashamed of. And so these kids have really helped us free up our curriculum in that regard. Also, they just um, go into the most fun stuff, sometimes the history of drag. Um, 
I, Ellen, I just loved that week. That was really good. And, um, and so I came away learning that um, about the close family relationships that are built in um, drag houses. So oftentimes we hear this very, very sad stories about LGBTQ kids um, being rejected by their parents. And so um, these drag families have you know, created um, a new family, um, a found family, whatever, but a family nonetheless. And that includes like financial and emotional support and, um, you know, a place to live, et cetera. So that history, uh, that's just something um, that I didn't know uh, that uh, was so important in, in the history of drag because drag is often seen as kind of camp or um, just entertainment or even kind of, you know, licentious entertainment when nothing could be further from the truth actually. Thank you. No, I do feel that uh, our youth really often help us recognize where we're stuck <laughs> and where we have grown up with certain ideas and, and values and they help us expand and grow. And I, I feel, at least in my life, kids have really helped me also see things, gender expression in something like the Equal Rights Amendment. The Equal Rights Amendment was dead until it got really renewed now in talk about gender inclusivity. And I'm ecstatic to see mm -hmm. that it might become an amendment to the constitution at long last after having been authored in 1923. So <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it is. So I love hearing how um, in addition to providing support for the members of the GSA, the students have been our teachers and have helped us expand the curriculum and rethink the curriculum. And I hope teach about oppression, about the former criminalization of non-conforming gender expression. So I understand that your work goes also beyond the high school and you've done work in the community as well to help raise awareness. Would you like to tell us about Transgender Remembrance Day? Yes, so this fall, Bryn and I, my co-president, we planned with the club a vigil on the common for Transgender Day of Remembrance this year. And we filed for the proper permits and we made sure like everyone had masks and were socially distant. And we had candles and like a name plaque and like information regarding each person who was killed in a transphobic attack over the past year. And then we said a few words on the town common. So that was very nice. Thank you. Have you done other activism in the community that you'd like to talk about? Yeah, right now we're starting up a fundraiser for an LGBTQ charity. So that's our next step. We've marched in Youth Pride a couple of times. Um, of course, that's going to be canceled again this year. Um, and that's kind of a student friendly version of um, big pride that happens in June. Um, and so it's very family friendly um, and um, there's all kinds of education uh, um, and tables set out uh, that, um, you know, with flyers and pamphlets and stuff like that. But what is really um, the most heartening is to see all of those LGBTQ youth together in one spot and expressing themselves in, in the way they want to. Um, it's just a big, huge love fest and it really restores your faith in the world, you know, to see kids with their parents there supporting them and supporting each other. Um, that's, that has, that's like one of the things we really miss not being able to pin, uh, participate in with the pandemic. What's day of silence? Day of Silence is a yearly tradition of a like small, like school friendly protest that students do where they're excused from speaking for the day in protest of trans and gender nonconforming and queer youth who can't express themselves how they want because of homophobia, whether it be like at home or in schools, anything like that. And so usually that's facilitated by GSAs like ours. And this year we did a virtual campaign for our school and we just followed GLSEN's format of 
reaching out and seeing what our GSA members wish they could tell the community and what they wanted them to know. And then we broadcasted that on social media. What would you like people who want to be allies to our LBGTQ plus family members and friends to know? What can we do to support our youth? It's important to just keep asking questions and keep an open mind and to keep learning, like just be open to learning new things. And also like this, it's the little things like seeing like safe space for all stickers and like rainbow flags, like small ones or like just having your pronouns like in your Zoom name or at the end of emails, that makes a big difference because like it makes you feel seen. So that's really important. It makes you feel seen. Thank you. Can I um, add something? Um, I would be remiss not to point out that PFLAG meets in Reading on the second Thursday of every month. PFLAG is parents and friends of lesbian and gays. Um, and um, they're just a remarkable group. If um, family members or um, friends are um, don't know how to support their um, LGBTQ loved ones or um, don't know how to broach the topic or someone's come out, um, they're just very, very, very helpful. Um, and they do a ton of financial support of GSAs, but we have one here in Reading, um, it's um, Greater Boston P flag, and it's run by Martha Moore. And Martha is um, a former; she's a retired science teacher from Reading High School, and just a wonderful person. Um, so, adults—that's for adults um, from seven to eight, and then at eight o'clock, students can join, and adults leave. So it's very safe. It's um, uh, moderated by uh, Martha Moore, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and also GLSEN, um, if you Google, if you're looking for really serious research on LGBTQ issues, GLSEN, which is, um, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the, um, at what, exactly what the acronym stands for, but it's G-L-E-S-E-N, and it's something about um, education and um, social networking for um, gay and lesbian people. Um, but they have a wealth of information online that's um, accurate and, um, and objective um, and, and just really helpful. And if I could just say one more thing about support, um, you, you asked the question, um, what can allies do to um, indicate their support of LGBTQ kids? And um, I know that um, it sounds like a big alphabet and it's very um, complicated and what is gender expression and what is sexuality and what is the difference between the two? Those things, um, it's, it's not easy for everybody, um, but kids um, and LGBTQ folk in particular are very forgiving about mistakes that are made um, with good intentions and stuff like that. So I would echo what Ellen says about support and just listen, ask questions and indicate that you're, you're gay friendly and um, that goes a long way. Well, I can certainly see why the club has grown and is thriving under the leadership of our student leader and our faculty leader. Thank you so much. And thank you for letting us know about this resource in the community that I don't think enough of us have known about previously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.